Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got a 12-speed prototype electronic group set spotted, a 1x TT bike, research into additive manufacturing using titanium, plus a new gravel bike. And we also look at ways that you've made your bikes lighter. I love a light bike. Yeah, I really like a light bike too. Now, barely a week goes by without having a new gravel bike launched onto the scene. And this week, it's the turn of Cannondale, and they've got a new bike called the Topstone. So, this one has said to take its geometry selection through careful consideration with the Synapse range of bikes, which are their endurance range. Uh, after all, that is gonna give you a really nice position on that bike, as opposed to if you went for the mountain bike geometry, well, it's gonna be really slack and like a mountain bike. And if it's too aggressive, well, it's gonna be a road bike. And after all, it needs to sit somewhere on our gravel spectrum. And as expected, this bike has loads and loads of mounts. You can mount your bags, your, your panniers, uh, your mud guards, and they're all really nicely hidden away. And you can even mount three bottles. Uh, the Apex One even has a dropper seat post, which is super useful. Yeah. Yeah, and what I really like about that dropper post is that its lever is really neatly hidden away to, to operate it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, under the, the left. Yeah, just brake, where, the, where yeah. the left hand brake lever mounts onto the drop. But I still think there's room for the big group set manufacturers out there, Shimano, Campagnola, and SRAM, to kind of try and integrate it somehow with their levers. So maybe a DI2 operated oh, one. Exactly. I imagine how cool that would yeah. be. A wireless ETAP one, or a wired uh, EPS one from Campagnolo. John, I think you should send it some designs. I think that'd be cool. Or even just a cabled one, somehow just a bit of a hack or a bodge. I don't yeah. know, but either way, I think it's super cool. And I want to see it happening more and more. Uh, what we can't tell you though, is whether or not it's compatible with 650B wheels or not, which a lot of people again like to have that option or versatility to switch between the two. However, what I can confirm is the price there between $1,000 and $2,000, which is pretty good value for money, isn't it? I would say so, yeah. yeah. I might have to dabble in a bit of gravel myself. You should, you should. Yeah. And there's also been a study on additive manufacturing of titanium, and they have actually bring out a new crank arm, which is quite interesting. And whilst it's called additive, it's not actually necessarily adding anything extra into the mix. It's all about actually changing manufacturing techniques away from those conventional methods that are used. So, why would you actually want to do that? Well, there's the possibility there to actually improve production time, use less resources, possibly make things lighter, save some weight, make things stronger. Who knows, but it sounds good to me anyway. Yeah, well, John, all of those qualities sound really good. But actually, during the test, well, I'm sad to say it did actually fail, mm. but it does look really different. And if you do want to go and check out the video, then we have put a link in the description section below. So do go and check that one out. Yeah, more tech later. So last week, Ollie and I tackled the subject of how do you lose weight on a bike? And we gave you some very good cost-effective measures, but we also asked you on ways in which you've done it or suggestions. Yeah, and that's really interesting. But before we dive deep into those responses, we thought it'd be interesting, and we'd like to find out from you, if you would like to see all the GCN presenters go head to head on building the lightest bike. And if you want to get involved in that poll, then click up there. Yeah, Top either yes or no, do you want to see it? Although, I don't think we should have every presenter because no. there could well be some cheating. <coughs> no. Going so fast, it looks like he's got a motor on his bike. Uh, but yeah, either way, vote up there. But anyway, here are some of your responses. Let's have a look through them then, shall we? Right, so first one is from Jeremy Hansen. He, and he did, he cut the seat post after finding my saddle position and he saved 150 grams. Well, I mean, that's, a that's lot, isn't it? pretty risky though. And you need to make sure the safe limit inside the frame. Yeah. Because it used to be in the frames. Well, well I mean, we used to well, all do it with old did we? heavy alloy seat posts. I certainly did, yeah. yeah. I've certainly cut down seat posts in the past, long alloy heavy yeah. seat posts. Uh, but it is quite risky because you need to know exactly how much is inside that frame still. But a bit of basic magic. You can't really have that much left in, no, can you? No, you need, you need well, it yeah. depends really how much how much is out of the frame. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously you've got a bit of flex, a bit of added pressure on there, that so, kind of thing. So go careful, really. Yeah. Now, Chuck Norris, 
Uh, Chuck recommends quick releases. For $30, you can get a set of titanium skewers and cut nearly 100 grams from a stock heavy steel quick release. Yeah, something I've also done I've in the done past. That. Yeah, put quick releases on that made of titanium or mm. alloy. And the <laughs> next one is from Marnug. Fly Elite bottles for about oh, yeah. $6 if you're in America will save you about 40 grams over most other bottles. Mm. That, that is so true. Is when it? I, yeah, I picked up one of those bottles at a show a little while back and I was absolutely amazed at how light it was. Of course, for those lightweight bottles, you are going to need one of these. What Jonathan in Malmesbury in England, not that far away no, from No, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. He drilled 36 holes inside of his bottle cage. Wow. And, uh, well, he saved four grams. Four grams, but I mean, he's put some time in there, so hats yeah. off to the man. Yeah, it looks nice and neat, that. It does, it? actually, yeah. Desparia Brooks, when you can pay $300 to save a few grams off a saddle, and there's still not the least cost efficient way of saving weight, just spit a couple of times before a hill. <laughs> spit weight is dead weight. Nah, yeah, that's really, not that's, that. I mean, that's really when you don't have the <laughs> cash, isn't it? It's not the most elegant thing to do, and no. well, you're not going to save that much. It depends how much spit you've got. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather take the bank loan. Yeah, and buy some nice car kind of wheels, personally. Yeah, rather than spitting. Yeah, that's that's vulgar. <laughs> now, Phil, now Phil Adams, this is extreme, right? I'm going to run through all of Phil's little things. Oh gosh, for hill go. climbs, Phil has chopped his drops. So Ollie mentioned that last week. Chopping away, used a track tubular, risking punctures big time. Was already worn out, so lighter than new. I'm liking where this is going. Shortened the chain too much on purpose. Drilled holes in saddle, brake calipers, and even their shoes. Uh, removed all bar tape and shifter hoods, removed sprockets that wouldn't get used, and replaced with spacers, removed the big ring and front mech, wow. removed the fork expander and top cap, removed excess seat posts to a questionable degree, which has already been mentioned yeah. earlier on, uh, removed paint and decals off everything, shaved his head, cut his toenails the night before the hill climb, not worn sunglasses in excessive light, removed the rear brake, which is illegal in competition, but well, Strava, KOMs and all that. Um, saved around one and a half kilos. Um, worth wow. it. Wow. The problem is, he says, it's not practical for everyday use. Now, no. Phil Adams, that is some kind of obsession that I mm. truly love. Brilliant swimming, mate. I really want to see a picture of all this put together. Not those toenails, though. No, that, no, 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 that's no, too far. No. Now, first up, in case you were unaware, it's currently the Vuelta Espana, and in fact, both of us were on the ground there we last week. Indeed, yeah. We're checking out bits of tech. And whilst they're checking out the tech, I spotted something very cool, very new. Well, it's a prototype product. And this was on the bike of Maxi Monfort of Lotto Sedal. And this is a, well, an unbranded Campagnolo rear derailleur. Uh, now, it takes a very similar shape to the current EPS offering out there, although this model was in fact made of alloy, so it's not gonna be the lightest thing in the world, and that goes for the front neck too. Now, let's go on to the levers. Now, this is probably the strangest thing, because to my knowledge, the brain of the EPS system sits in the DTI box, so I don't quite understand why they've used, why they haven't just used branded 11-speed levers. The only thing I can think is that they're going to take a slight redesign of those levers oh, okay. because those 12-speed levers, when I looked up closely to them, or the unbranded ones rather, the cutouts in the actual blade of the brake lever are slightly larger in a different shape to mm. ones on the 11-speed group set. So there we are, maybe saving some weight there. So let's stick with Lotto Sudal, shall we? Because they have some TT specialists in their ranking. They've got the Belgium national champion and the European champion, Victor Campanaz. And he was spotted using a 60 tooth chain ring for the TT in Malaga which yeah. is a pretty sizable dinner plate there. Uh, now, it's not the first time that Campanaz has been using that 60 tooth chain ring because he also used it back at the Bink Bank oh. Tour a couple of weeks back and also the European Champs, which he famously won. I think he only won that by a second or two. It was it? close, yeah. Yeah, so he has got that. Uh, now, interestingly, it's a narrow, wide style chain ring. So alternately, the teeth are narrow and wide, hence the name, mm. and then they work and they mesh really well with the narrow and wide links of the chain. So that's gonna help it stay on a little bit better. Interestingly, no clutch rear derailleur. So, I mean, obviously Campagnolo, they don't make one, certainly not to my knowledge. I didn't spot that when I was rummaging around and getting my grubby little hands on everything. But I reckon as well that by using a clutch rear mech, you do have a slight increase in resistance of a drivetrain. 
So do you think we are going to see more of these 60 tooth chain rings out there for TT specialists? Well, in the past, we've seen riders. We saw David Miller. He used a single chain ring back, yeah. I think, 2003, Tour de France. Was, oh, did Fabian saw... Cancellara? I don't know if mm. Cancellara did. Tony Martin definitely yeah. did. I think even last year he was using it. But oh. I think this year he's gone back to using a standard double setup. Spectra. No, 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 oh. not the James Bond film. This instead is a limited edition carbon frame from Czech brand Festka. And well, the paintwork has taken inspiration from Cubism, kind of inventor, mm. I guess you could yeah. call it, Spanish gentleman Pablo Picasso. And this is a limited edition. Well, in fact, it's called La Vuelta Edition. Uh, limited Lim edition for La Vuelta. All right. And well, there's only seven of these made in this amazing red color to show, well, the leader of the race. And then they've got this yellow and orange in there, well, to show what the leader of the race jersey used to be like. Yeah. But it's not just pretty colours, is it, John? No, it's not. It also has just been made with rim brake options. So, according to Fesca, now this is going to get quite controversial, oh, I no. think. They claim that the parkour of the Vuelta is more suited to rim brakes than disc brakes. Oh, so, strong statement. I know, there, John, I know. The statement. comments are going to go absolutely <laughs> wild today. But anyway, yeah. that's what they claim. So, well, who are we to disagree? Now something, a real neat just finishing touch on this bike is the 73 painted on the stem in that kind of cubism way, which is a nod to the 73rd edition of the Vuelta. Now, final bit of tech this week. Go on. Well, last week, Ollie and I were talking about those lightweight bikes. Earlier on, we yeah. touched on it again, and I absolutely love it. And I've put my hand in my wallet. I bought myself some bike porn this week. Oh no. Check out this bottle cage. Wow. Yeah, look at it. It's Minimalistic. Not much to it, isn't it? Yeah. Feel how light it is, go on. I mean, that is ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Viewers at home or on your phones, whatever it is you're doing, this is crazy light. Mm. Just 7.6 grams what I weighed oh, it in at. Hold on there, we need to test that. Come on now. All right, go on then. Let's Give get the go. scales out. Right, on. let's put it on then. Because he doesn't believe me, this guy. Never does. Right. Seven. Well, there you uh, At 7.6, you were leaning oh, close I, by. I, I, there 7. we are. 7.6 grams. If we are going to have that presenter challenge, making the lightest bikes, then that is the one I'm going to use on that. Yes, I think you're probably right there, but I'm probably just gonna keep my bottle empty. It's time for the part of the show where you screw riding upgrades and instead you buy upgrades. And you could be in with a chance of winning a GCN workshop apron if you've got the best upgrade on the GCN tech show. So remember to submit yours using the GCN uploader tool down there in the description below. And well, let's see what we've had sent in this mm. week, shall we? We've got three to choose from. In fact, you're gonna choose from them, but we'll more on that a bit later on. First up, it's Kim from Brussels. And he says, I love buying upgrades and I want to share my bike which has received quite a few of them. My 1995 Fuji Ace made me discover the joys of road cycling. I, a joy I had just last encountered as a teenager. 20 kilos lost later, well me and my Fuji Ace are an inseparable pair. So what upgrades did I buy? Well, a custom physique saddle in matching color scheme as the rest of the bike and the physique handlebar. I also get lots of questions about what I've done with my wheels. Yeah, I was wondering that myself. And you've actually put LED lights from Revo lights that make the bike turn into a proper Tron <laughs> bike at night. Yep, this is a 1995 steel has really come to the 21st century. That's a nice bit of upgrading actually, isn't it? Mm. Because, you know, they've kept it in the old style, but they've put some new bits on it just to, well, with the uh, comfort really, yeah. let's face it. You know, he's got himself a nice comfortable saddle now, rather than probably a razor blade that he was sitting on before. And I like the color scheme with the reds and the blacks, but I'm not sure about the LED lights. I think safety first, you can never put a price on safety, James. Now, Dave <laughs> from the Netherlands, Bought a giant TCR Zero back in 2013. First upgrades were removing the standard saddle and tyres to a Ritchie saddle and Vittoria mm. Rubino Good Pro tyres. After that, upgraded the rims from the standard giant ones to lightweight tuned TSR 30 wheels. They are light, yeah. believe me. Replaced the Ritchie saddle for a full carbon saddle and replaced the tyres to Vittoria Corsa with latex inner tubes. This sounds like Ollie talking last week all about his latex inner tubes. Anyway, then recently upgraded the entire bike, frame, group set, rims, tyres, everything from TCR to Propel. 
Right, finishing off then, from James from Manchester, and well, he says, totally unnecessary upgrade, which <laughs> I couldn't resist any longer. A leaf saddle from AX Lightness, saving me 130 grams. I had already had a coffee and done my Emma Pooley star jobs, so this came next. Now, to mix it up, like we said earlier on, the winner is actually gonna be chosen by you, the viewers, mm. so, it's all in well, your hands. Yeah, you're gonna have to vote on the poll on screen now. Is it Tim's Tron bike, Dave's upgrades on his Giant, or is it James from Manchester and his new saddle? Next week, we'll have to announce the winner and have three more, I reckon, for people to choose from. I'll be interested to see who you'd go for, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna tell you because, well, it's the viewers, isn't it? Yeah. I don't wanna influence any decisions no. out there, but between me and you, it's probably gonna be <laughs> the AX Lightness saddle. Interesting. Yeah, and you're gonna go for the Tron bike. Yes, I am. I reckon. Yeah, of course yeah. I am. Bike of the week time where you get to vote for your favorite bike of two that we put head to head. And well, last week we had two bikes and the first one was the BH Ultralight of Amal Moana of the Fortunio team. And that was up against his Trek Madon SLR9 disc brake bike. And the winner with 84% of the votes, it was you James, well done mate. Oh. Well yes. done, well done. Yes. We are never, I, ever, ever going to hear the end of this, believe me. But, well, he silenced for the moment. And let's go on then to this week's, we've got two TT bikes oh, head to head. I love TT bikes. He gets so excited by them. You should have seen them at the Vuelta. Uncontrollable, oh, in fact. It was. Anyway, <laughs> first up is the uh, Merida Warp TT bike used by the Bahrain Merida team. Nice and bike. this one has a full Shimano Durace Di2 group set, fulcrum wheels, vision bars, an absolute beauty and it's up against the BMC Time Machine of BMC Racing in that cool matte black paintwork. Oh. Well, not even paintwork, is it? There's none there. No. Uh, and that, again, full Shimano Durace DI2 group set, pro disc wheel, pro tri-spoke, 3T handlebars, physique saddle. Oh, I'm torn this week. Oh, I'm not. I actually saw that last week at the Vuelta and I was blown away with that time machine, time trial bike. And yeah, I th and I thought it was a really good looking bike. Yeah, it's interesting as well, the frame designs on those, you know, the smaller bikes compared to the larger. Mm. Anyway, anyway, that's enough of that because, well, we want you to vote and you've got to vote up there for your favorite. And uh, next week, we will reveal the results and have two more. I'm gonna go gentle this week, head to head. I never learn, honestly, <laughs> I never learn, mate. Look at those knuckles. Oof. Now it's time for the bike vault, and well, it's your first trip into uh, the bike vault, isn't I'm, it? I'm looking forward to it though, John. Yeah. I am looking forward to it. And you know the rules, don't you? We rate the bikes either nice or super nice that the viewers have submitted. So does that mean I get to ring the bell? You are more than welcome oh, to ring yes. that blasted bell, believe me. And of course, if you want to have a chance of your bike being featured in the bike vault, then use our uploader tool. There's a link to it in the description below and include as much information about the bike, you, where you've been riding on it, all those things, because it makes the story ever so much mm. better. Anyway, I reckon we should crack on with Let's the first it. bike this week. What do we have here? We've got John from Zurich. This is the Cinelli Superstar SRAM Red ETA oh. Physique Stem and Saddle oh. Skin Wall Tires. That looks so cool, doesn't it? Oh, I love the look of that bike. Yeah. Straight away, it's eye popping with those tan wall tires. Yeah. And also, these little flashes of colour just on the stays, on the mm. on the top tube, on the down tube, on the fork. And hang on a minute. He's no. Got, he's got one of those one of those bottle cages we spoke about earlier on. Cheeky little John from Zurich Oof. has put one on his bike. John, that's a nice touch. So what yeah. are you going to give it, mate? Personally, I think that bike looks great. I you don't see too. many Chinellis these days. We used to see them all the time. You don't see them. But yeah, personally, I think it's super nice. What are you? Super nice. Oh, good God, he's rung the bell. Yeah. And he's rung it Super loud, nice, there you have me. it. Crumbs. Right, next up, Christine from Strawberry Way in Pittsburgh. This is Christine's Conargo V2R Ooh, in raspberry Conargo. raspberry red, SRAM ETAP again, ZIP mm. 303 NSWs, Great Continental GPs, E brakes from Cane Creek, 3T cockpit, specialized carbon rail saddle, Lizard Skins red saddle bag, weighs 14 pounds, 14 ounces. Uh, 14, uh, that's just under 6.8, so the UCI limit. Look at Light it. My bike. Just look at that. Ras oh. Raspberry red. I love that colour yeah. scheme. I've never seen one in that I've colour. never seen one of it. And it's also got the seat post in that same colour, which yeah. looks really cool, actually. It looks it looks great, that bike. Mm. It's done well. You know, the saddlebag matches, the bottle cages, they've got a nice little finishing touch. 
It's well, it's in the big ring. Yeah. Always gets a bonus from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, without further ado, mate, I'm going to give that a super nice. Yeah, to be honest, that's a super nice from me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Super nice. All right, you don't have to read it quite that much. Oh, sorry. God. Anyway, right. Ronnie from Amsterdam. What's Ronnie? Oh, let's see. All right, come on then, Ronnie. Ron, this is Ronnie's Eddie Merckx EMX7. They were used by Quickstep back in, I don't know, 2011, 12, something like that. 2011, I think. Uh, he says, it's my most unforgiving bike. Stiff as hell, but bloody fast. SRAM Red, Campy Bora Ultra 2 wheels, ceramic bearings, Pro Stealth handlebar, mm. couple of old retro bottles too. Look at that, a couple of old, look at that, an old Eddie Merckx logo. <laughs> I love a, a retro a, a bottle. A big logo as well, of course, yeah. used by some of those very famous riders of days gone by. Plus, he's got a race yeah, number just, on there as I well. I just saw that. Hey, yeah. Newsblad. Yeah, hey, got, Newsblad, number one, two, all, eight. All those, all those numbers. Yeah. yeah. I like the SRAM yeah. Red. Gold I, chain. I Who doesn't like a gold box. chain? Do you like a gold chain? I love a gold chain, yeah. yeah another one to the crew. Yes, mate. Yes, I thought he was going to leave me hanging for a minute. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, gave me the old <laughs> fist bump. Ollie loves gold chain. I love gold chain. You love gold chain. Cy doesn't love gold chains. No. So, it's a super nice. <laughs> yeah, therefore, it's a super nice. Yeah, super nice. <laughs> My yes. word. Right, Charles from Crew in the UK. Uh, he loves new tech and just mm. fitted their new Olympus Kratos or Kratos carbon deep section wheels to the custom built Rally Militis Pro frame set, SRAM E Tech, Brook C13 carbon saddle, Thompson Dead of Finishing kit, and titanium bottle cage and bolts. A nice gold KMC chain. Yes. Uh, and a bit of old school Dura 7700 pedals as they prefer those. Mm. John, rush to assemble, logos in wrong places. <laughs> well, that is possibly the biggest downfall, isn't it, really? Yeah. Not lining up those logos on that I was going to say, that's a bit of a shame, actually. Yeah, yeah because it it stands out, doesn't it? That blue, mm. that blue pops. Blue I like and black. It. I yeah. quite like that colourway. Yeah, but I don't know, actually. Something about no, it. No, I'm it's torn. Just, it's just the logos. I'm torn, yeah. I mean... I wish you'd lined up those logos. What are you going to give that, John? Charles from Crew. Personally, Charles from Crew, you're going to get a nice because I, it it messes around with yeah. my uh, and my zen and my feng shui and all that. Not having those logos in the right place. And John, I think I'm with you, mate. I think yeah. I'm going to give you a nice. Yeah. Despite having a gold chain, another one. All right. <laughs> it's in the crew. Yeah. Nice bike that. Now finally. Paco Polocki from Finland. I hope I got your name mm. pronounced correctly because these Finnish names... Paco Polki. Yeah. These names are an absolute mm. nightmare for us to pronounce. Mm. Well, especially me. It gets me. difficult. Bataglin Low Pro. This... Check out, this is the description. I built this one as a birthday gift for myself. Good start. Yeah, I always do that. Mm. Uh, so I have something that is about the same age as me. And it's just as practical as me, Paco says. <laughs> uh, 5415. That is a big old gear, mm. isn't it, to be rolling along in? Brakeless and the drop from saddle to stem, yeah. 22.5 centimeters. That's a big drop. And apparently, that keeps it comfy on the roads. I think there's a bit of sarcasm what? in it. I think there's a bit of sarcasm yeah, in I think there. So. Uh, it's got Campagnolo C record piece mm. to parts, a roll nice. saddle, fur quasar rims, LA87 bull horns, and all that. Ooh. Check it. I mean, that. Oh, I Mate, love a retro bike and 650C front the wheel. Biscuit, that does. 650 toe clips. It stood up using what looks to be a, a bottle. Oh yeah, a water bottle. Mm. It's just a cool looking bike. Look at the size of that dinner plate on the front end. I know. Ooh. Once you get up to speed, well, it's going to take a lot of slowing mm. down, isn't have it? Have you it's ridden with bull horns? I have, yeah. Have you? Yeah. I've never done that. Yeah. What's that like? Well, I know, I had tri bars as well. Yeah. yeah not, not that old. That's 1984. No. Come on. I would yeah. have been younger at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd personally, <laughs> that bike, he wouldn't have been born. God. Old. Anyway, that bike, oh, personally. What are you going to give it? I'm, yeah, I know exactly what I'm yeah, giving it. Curved that. top tube. Look how steep the seat mm, tube is. I Look love at it. That. It's almost vertical. It's beautiful. Yeah. Super nice. Oh, super nice from me, oh, too. I've been dying are. to ring that bell. There we are. Four out of five this week. Four out of five super nices. Yeah, it's a good selection mm. of bikes in there. Uh, so, as ever, to submit yours, use that uploader tool down there in the description. We want to mm. know all about your bike. We want to see them from all parts of the world. We love this, don't we? Yeah, and box. give me more chance to ring this bell. All right, greedy. <laughs> You've had four out of five. Yeah, true. That's a good ratio, yeah. that. Anyway, more next week. Well, sadly, it's come to an end, and but well, what a show it's been! And I've loved, He's I've loved, loved it, being honestly. here, so I can't wait to yeah. be back. But Good. remember to like and share this video, 
And yeah, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Yeah, well just give us a thumbs up anyway. And True. also remember to click that notification bell down there so you don't miss any of our videos coming up. Also, what have you got coming up? Well, oh yeah, what have we got coming up? Yeah. So we've got some tech from the Vuelta coming up, of course. So of course, if people click that notification bell, they'll see it they all. They won't miss they? it. Tony Martin's Pro Bike, carbon nice. fiber repair, how to adjust your headset. Uh, we've got a tech clinic, then we're back in here again. Wow, yeah. so much, There's so to much look stuff going to, on. Yeah. Oh god, I absolutely love it. More and more tech. Anyway, remember as well, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've We've got a whole heap of goodies, haven't we? Red or black, we've got. Or black or red. Or other colour schemes, they're all out there. Yeah, as well as stuff to ride ride on your bike wearing as well. I got it out in the end. (laughs) Anyway, it's been great having you. Mm. And for another great video, this time, how to fit new jockey wheels, click just down here.